we wanted to talk a bit about SharePoint Framework, uh, which is now you can actually build multi-tab solutions using the Microsoft Teams toolkit. So I'm going to do a live demo on that as well. Uh, a bit of an update on the SharePoint Framework as well, uh, which by the way, we kind of intentionally started using more and more SPFX because it's not just about SharePoint and we're going to touch that again today as well. But uh, SharePoint Framework um, is the tooling, uh, it's the easiest tooling to build your enterprise solutions for Microsoft 365. It has the automatic single sign-on. You don't need to worry about anything. You're just magically authenticated. It has the automatic hosting, super, super important thing. And the reason why automatic hosting is super valuable is that the code, which is running as a SharePoint framework solution, is running at the customer tenant. So there will not be any compliance, policy, security concerns from a customer side because everything is automatically hosted inside of the customer tenant. So they, need, they don't need to grant any applications externally getting access to their application. The code itself, the TypeScript, JavaScript, which is running and accessing customer information running inside of the tenant as well. So really good security boundary as well. Cons consistent dev experience and of course using industry standard tooling. So no proprietary APIs or proprietary uh, programming languages uh, which you are using. Now, as part of the, the SharePoint Framework 1.16 release, which went GA last week, uh, we mentioned that on the latest news line, we actually extended uh, the scope of SharePoint Framework even more. So um, it is really flexible model. Uh, the naming is highly confusing. You are using TypeScript. You can choose to use React, Angular, Vue, whatever client-side development tooling, and then typically use the Microsoft Craft to get access on the APIs and information, and your application can be running in SharePoint, in Microsoft Viva, Microsoft Teams, or now also in Outlook or in the Microsoft 365 app, which is basically the office.com, uh, but there's the naming renaming happening within the applications, which is a bit of a confusing, but it's, it's Outlook and Office uh, for those who are familiar uh, with those terms. And again, there is for all of these things, these applications and all of the different shapes, there's the auto automatic single sign-on, there's automatic code hosting available, and you are building with React uh, or with TypeScript, uh, more importantly, not with React. You can use React, you can use Angular, you can use other things as well. We we in Microsoft, we use uh, SharePoint Framework uh, to build a lot of the experiences as well for Microsoft Viva, for SharePoint, and so on. So you are using exactly the same tool stack what the engineering is using as well. So we're not just building, giving you an alternative ways of doing extensibility in Microsoft 365. No, no, you are using exactly the same tool stack as our engineering is using as well. So it's a, it's a future-proven model uh, from that perspective. Now, uh, I will jump on Eduardo's question. Uh, you can use Vue.js, you can use Angular, you don't need to use any, any uh, 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 framework, you can use React. Uh, we do provide by default a scaffolding or a starting project in React. We do not provide that for Vue or Angular, but you can absolutely associate Angular on Vue or whatever is your chosen uh, JavaScript framework for SharePoint framework to be used. Uh, it's really up to you. And we have even tooling and tutorials in place how to get started with that. Now, the Teams Toolkit is one of the tooling uh, to be available uh, to build experiences with SharePoint Framework. And of course, as we're using Teams Toolkit, as the name implies, you are then targeting Microsoft Teams. Now, of course, we're looking into doing more alignments in here uh, in the future. So making sure that it's it's not only for Microsoft Teams, the Teams toolkit will be probably um, extended to be more for other applications as well, because in Microsoft 365, it's not just about Teams, it's, all, it's about the other applications as well. Teams is of course super important, uh, but we have other shapes and other other extensibility options as well. Now, the Teams toolkit itself simplifies the Microsoft Teams development with SPFX. We're going to do a live demo on that one in a second. SPFX enables the automatic hosting again, but fifth time of mentioning that inside of the customer tenant, which is the cool thing here. Uh, behind the scenes, the Microsoft Teams toolkit is using the SharePoint Framework German generator. So basically, as we are shipping a new versions of SharePoint Framework, it is actually using the, the command line integrations and automation with SharePoint Framework Engineering team to make sure that everything is aligned. Um, there's a really easy F5 debugging experience uh, directly in the Teams Toolkit, which makes it super easy to do these uh, implementations. Um, and starting with Teams Toolkit version 1.4, uh, you can actually build multiple tabs with SPFX Team Solutions uh, really, really easily. And we're going to see that one in practice as well. Now, we're doing a further alignment um, and features and, and capability alignment with 
across the team. So Microsoft Teams Toolkit, VS Code team, and the IDE team, and then the SharePoint Framework team uh, is doing more and more integration uh, discussions and roadmap planning together um, to make this even better in the future. Now let's let's have a look on how that looks in practice. So let's go to the demo section of things. And let me start by having a clean uh, solution. Um, so what I've done here in my Visual Studio code, uh, I included quite a few extensions, um, but if you look for Teams uh, Toolkit uh, or search for Teams, hello, there we go. We can find the Teams Toolkit uh, in here, and in my case, it's already being installed. That's the easiest way to really, of course, install that in the VS Code. Well, that's the only way to install that in the VS Code uh, to get started. Um, and we can see that the latest version is 1.4.1, uh, uh, wherever I actually saw that in the second, there we go. And in 4.1, we included this capability what we're gonna show today. Now, when I start using the Teams Toolkit, uh, I'm gonna choose a create a new Teams application. I can also start from samples, which is really cool. Uh, I can go to documentation and how to guides as well. Let's me start by uh, Teams Toolkit. I'm gonna create a new Teams application. Um, this is a bit of a confusing thing uh, from a terminology perspective, which we're looking into getting adjusted. Um, we, as we start building Teams tabs using Teams Toolkit with SPFX, uh, you're going to choose the SPFX tab option in here. Now, it says Teams Aware web pages, but they're not actually web pages. They are TypeScript components. Um, so we're looking into adjusting that terminology uh, with the team quite soon uh, because that's quite misleading it's not a web page and even though if it, if it would be a web page there should be a space between that one because web page together is not english it might be finglish but it's not english anyway so let me choose that option uh, and then it's going to ask me the what is going to be the name and and what is the the, the baseline structure what we're going to use as a starting point of my solutions and we do provide three of them uh, which is React, Minimal, and None. Now, this comes back on the questions what Eduardo had. Can we use Angular? Can we use some other tooling? And the answer is yes. What we would be doing is that you choose None, and then you associate uh, your one that JavaScript client framework uh, to be included in that project. So the React here is just us giving you opinionated structure where we give you a starting point of React. You could just as well actually do none and then associate React to be used there uh, with, with the different options. So there are multiple options. We do not restrict uh, what, what is your chosen JavaScript uh, client-side framework. Now, React itself is here an option because we use React internally. Uh, so most of the implementations of SharePoint framework which engineering is doing are built using React. So that's why the React is in here and we provide React-based controls and all of that stuff. Now, let me choose React. Let's call this React uh, Hello World. Um, and it's gonna then ask me where I'm gonna save the, the solution. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm gonna do say, React uh, Hello World Nov 22. And it's gonna create me the structure in the Teams toolkit. Now, in my case, I've actually done this in a separate project uh, because when we start debugging and when we start creating uh, the solutions, um, it actually runs the install command afterwards. Uh, so I'm going to save some time because the install npm install will take a while. I'm going to close that one and I'm going to close that one. And then I'm going to jump to an existing uh, solution where the npm install has been already executed. And, and basically this is the outcome what you're getting. So, Let's have a quick look on it in here and then add the additional tab in place. So what we have here is a Teams Toolkit in place. And as we are using the Teams Toolkit, we get a lot of, lot of uh, additional capabilities. Like for example, we can associate that directly to a tenant for a really easy F5 uh, debugging. I'll show that one in practice. Uh, we get also references to start a new application, view samples, uh, do an F5, uh, provision to the cloud. So a lot of these kind of a commands, which you would have to remember from a command line, you can directly click in this, and then that will initiate the needed commands and needed operation to make things happen. Add, a, add features uh, is an important one as well, uh, because that's the one where we will choose to add an additional tab to the SharePoint framework solution uh, pretty soon as we start developing this solution. Um, in the future, uh, we are looking into, of course, in SPFX solution case also to have the Azure functions and all of those scenarios in, in place in here as well. 
which are currently in add features option if you're building a SaaS hosted solution, but not for SPFX hosted solution, which is a bit of a bummer because it's quite common that you use Azure functions, even though you would be using SharePoint framework. Now, all depends on your design and, and scenarios. So in the solution structure side, um, if you are familiar with SharePoint Framework, uh, the Teams Toolkit works in a way that it actually encapsulates the SharePoint Framework solution to its own subfolder. So it has its own structures and instructions and configurations on how to do debugging everything else outside of the SharePoint Framework solution. Uh, behind of the scenes is still using Yeoman Generator to automate creation of these assets. So like in this case, we have a solution here and a web part here which is actually the tab, uh, which is uh, defined to be uh, exposed as a team's personal application. And that's the, the first tab which we have added using the create tab experience. We can also see a few uh, other settings here, which are really cool. Uh, so making it super easy to configure. Uh, we can uh, easily see the different options and configurations and the, the, the uh, metadata settings uh, for the package, which is getting deployed to my tenant. One of the really cool things here is that we're supporting, uh, the, or Teams Toolkit is supporting two different options. Uh, so it's actually supporting a dev and local options um, in here. So you can actually differentiate, are you deploying a developer side or a local option or other options. Um, so you can differentiate in the settings of the manifest already the text. So you clearly know that, okay, this is the debugging version. This is the developer version, this is production version, which is really, really cool. Now, in my case, um, a simple scenario, we kind of go to, let's go actually in here. Um, I'm going to do an F5. Um, I already signed in to my developer tenant, um, which is really, really cool. Um, I can click an F5 here. I don't have to do anything else than that. Um, and it actually starts deployment and packaging, and then it fires the browser in the right status and, and the right uh, options so that I can sign in uh, to my developer tenant. So making it super, super easy again to start implementing these solutions. Well, it's going to compile, it's going to run the web, a web stack, uh, all of that stuff. So that's going to take a while. Dun, 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 dun. And here we go. Now the local host is running and then we're firing still settings and commands and going for webpack. Technically, the webpack has already been executed within the solution, so we could have skipped that, but it's okay. Um, in this case, uh, we're then signing in uh, to the tenant. We can see that I'm in my developer tenant. Um, we're already signed in. And in here, it's going to then fire my uh, installation of my solution to the developer tenant, and I can add that solution to be as available uh, in the developer tenant. And now I'm running the solution uh, as a Teams toolkit November 22 demo with the one tab in the page. And of course, the SPFX solution behind of the scenes um, is showing the basic functionality. So it's basically pointing out that you are debugging scripts. Uh, we can now see behind of the scenes that we are in the context of the Visual Studio Code. So we can actually do debugging directly in Visual Studio Code. And SPFX solution is detecting that we are in the Teams app. So it shows that we are running in Teams, the web part properties, business details, and all of that. And we have a one tab available. The about is always the one which has the solution details. Now, the new thing in 4.1 uh, is the fact that if I close this one, let's shut down the debugging. I can do here, I can click add features. And as we are in a SharePoint framework solution, um, I can see the options for SharePoint framework, which is basically adding a new SPFX tab or then options related on CI, CD uh, workflows. We need to do some documentation improvements in here. Uh, but in my case, we're going to choose SPFX tab. Let's give it a, a name like uh, additional uh, tab, just to make sure that we can easily find that it's available. And that then scaffolds that additional tab to be available within the project. So making sure that it's, it's available. There we go, tab is available. We have a message in here. And if we go to the solution structure, extend to SPFX, we can actually see that we have two web parts available, um, which are then just these tabs. Well, they could be exposed as personal applications even in Outlook, but that's a separate discussion. That's not a demo of today. So now the cool thing here is that it's fully automatic. So now if I do F5 again, uh, we can do debugging in either one of the tabs. So now as I do F5, everything is automatic. I don't need to do anything. And it fires again my browser. 
making it super, super easy in TypeScript to do my development, debugging, testing, all of that stuff. And it has the hot reload as well in place. Uh, so of course you don't need to wait for the execution of all of this stuff. So we can do modifications directly in the code and it has the hot reload in place uh, within things. The reason why it now takes a while is that we did pause the debugging, added a web part, and then again, uh, we, we started the debugging again. Here we go. We're firing in teams. We're adding the solution and loading the solution. As the solution has significant modifications, we need to add it again. Um, but now we would be able to, as we're running in the browser, we can now see that we have two different tabs. You can see them both in here, which is really, really cool. Let's load the debug script. We can see the first tab available there. And as I click to the second tab, uh, it is available and getting loaded to other component. And this is the additional tab, which we just added on the code. So making it super, super easy to do modifications. And again, the hot reload works really, really well. Uh, so I can actually go, let's see if we can quickly do this. I can go in here, uh, not in there. Let me go to components. Uh, additional tab, let's call this out. Uh, welcome to SharePoint Framework in the call. And now if I do save, and let's go in here. Let's go to the business details and flip the tabs. Now it's compiled, it's refreshed, and hot reload should actually give us an updated message. Oh, there we go. Uh, we added that text in place. So now we can do live debugging, live testing of the code, uh, the TypeScript code. Uh, we can do modifications, we can adjust things um, in a matter of seconds. We can see this live uh, on the on the Microsoft Teams, making it super, super, super easy to do Microsoft Teams development with Teams Toolkit and SPFX. Cool, that's all what I'm gonna do uh, in this demo. Uh, so much cool stuff to show. Uh, we'll come back on the showing the other things and other settings and all of that. Mm -hmm.